Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in crypto and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, just the thumbnail suggests smart banks are going to start allowing their customers to buy Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. In all honesty, they really have no choice. So we're going to take a look at uh, why they have no choice and what's going on. We're also going to take a look at how uh, central bank digital coins or CBDCs are just not going to make it. And then we're going to talk about uh, crypto regulations and if they're close, I got to tell you only they actually are. And lastly, we'll talk about a video that we did over on Dan Clips about the play to earn game DeFi Marvel Avagachi. So we'll go over all those things, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market. Actually, but first, let's talk about the horrible tornado that happened in Kentucky. As you know, this channel is going to to donate the revenue from the YouTube videos and part of its uh, stake pool at DNews uh, for Cardano and also part of the stake pool for, for Avalanche to go help those fund efforts. Before you make any type of uh, charity donation, just make sure you're sending it to the right place and it's actually a place that actually does what it says it's going to do. So here's a great place to start. I'll link this in the uh, description below. This is from the New York Times and it just talks about how these are the places that you should look at as far as if you're going to donate and how you do it. Ah, limited articles, ah, get past that. But uh, we'll take a look at uh, all those things. That's what I'm going to be doing. It's up to you. Uh, links in the description. So first of all, let's take a look what's going on into uh, the market. So today's not a great day. It's Monday <laughs> and a uh, beautiful day here in, in Puerto Rico, but uh, not a great day for the actual market itself. So real quick, uh, we've got Bitcoin below 48,000, 47 something. And this I was... I put this video together. I thought, ah, this is uh, this shouldn't be too many things going on. It wasn't really exciting. Then all of a sudden, once we tip past the uh, opening bell uh, for the traditional market, it seemed like everything just took a big dump. And uh, here we are in the last hour, we're down a percentage point. In 24 hours, down 4% for, for Bitcoin. And then 7% for Solana, two, almost 3% in an hour. Everything's down. Down, 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 down. Why? Why is it down? Well, there could be reasons in the crypto market, or if we just take a look at what's going on in the traditional space, uh, here's what you got. Uh, S&P 500 is down 0.37. Again, this traditional marketplaces, uh, uh, you know, 1% is like the end all be all awful day. And in crypto, it's like, we just sneeze at that. NASDAQ down, Dow 30, Russell's down, US dollar index surprisingly up. Look at that, US dollar very strong for, for the fact that we're printing it into oblivion and Bitcoin index down. And then people always ask me, well, who cares about traditional market? But you have to understand the traditional players are in our space. And when things start to go sideways in their part of the world, they're like, well, I got to sell off something. They don't believe in crypto like we do. So they sell off crypto like no, 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 like no big deal. And they pay off all their different debts and whatever else like, whoo, great. But what they don't realize is that this really is the future. They're just tourists. We've been here for a long time. So that's what's going on in the markets. Uh, let's take a look at today's top story, which I think it is, which is banks have no choice. And I'm not picking on banks. I have no, I have no problems with banks. I have no problem with the people that work in the banks, very great people. Uh, but the banks themselves, you want to talk about central banks. Okay, we can have a debate about that. But when we take a look at stories like this, this makes me happy. And the question is, well, why don't they have a choice? Well, I'll get to that in a second. Let's just talk about this one. So Savings Bank wants to enable their customers uh, to trade Bitcoin. So this is according to Capital Research. The financial institutions are preparing a service with which their customers could train Bitcoin as early as 2022. A dedicated team, well, this is from a uh, the German Savings Bank. Uh, they're working on a crypto project that will enable them to trade digital currencies. A dedicated team and IT service provider, S Payment, is preparing the concept. The Spark case, I'm pretty sure I did not say that right, but those are the group of saving banks, and this is the committee, still have to vote on the project. If there is a green light, a first version of the so-called wallet could be launched later this year. Do not let them fool you. This is going to go out. This is going to happen. I'll tell you in a second. So with around 50 million customers, the saving banks, uh, the savings bank, SA, are the market leaders among German financial institutions. The savings banks, Kunden, could buy directly from their checking accounts. The cryptocurrencies, according to their plans, a corresponding pilot project should start first with individual savings. And in the end, each of the around 370 institutes independently decides whether to introduce crypto trading or not. And this is a funny thing because 
we've been hearing about banks starting to offer it. Uh, we, we took a look at uh, NYDIG and what they were doing as far as working with uh, smaller to medium-sized banks and credit unions and really enabling that process to happen. I know people right now are saying, again, who cares about the banks, Rob? We don't need the banks. That's, I mean, we don't. In all honesty, we really don't. But you have to understand, people are going through a transition. And some people just don't get it yet. So if we have to Trojan horse them to getting into going, look, if you don't really trust crypto and digital assets, why don't you just go over here to your bank? Because they're going to allow you to custody some uh, Bitcoin, and maybe some Ethereum, and maybe some uh, Solana and Cardano and all that good stuff. Just go over there to go check that out. No big deal. Very safe. Put a little bit in. Not a big deal. And then they can say, oh, okay, because I don't really understand crypto, but I'll just go to the banks. I trust them. And then later on, when they're like, wow, look at that. Uh, the money in my bank went up a whopping 0.02% this year. And then the Bitcoin that I put in went up 100%. Maybe I should do some more research. And before you know it, they really understand what's going on with crypto and digital assets. And that's why I talk about like, this is kind of like the Trojan horse. And when I say that the banks really have no choice, it's because they're losing foot traffic. They've closed uh, a massive amount of their physical stores. They still have online, but uh, you have to understand that's just lost revenue. And then if they take a real hard look at what's going on around them and just say, well, how is this crypto doing? Well, if you take a look at one of the top crypto exchanges in the US, I don't know if it's global, I think Binance is still crushing them. Uh, this was the S1 registration form for the SEC for Coinbase. And if you scroll down, let me see. Uh, this is, I mean, you can read this. It's super boring. I didn't read the whole thing myself. But if you just go down here to where it says this, this is my favorite part. Since inception through December 31st, we, meaning Coinbase, generate over $3.4 billion in, to, in total revenue. How do we do it? Largely from transaction fees that we earn from volume-based trades on our platform by retail users and institutions. So if you're a bank and you're like, man, we really need to figure out a way to generate some revenue. How could we possibly do that? Seems like people like crypto. Maybe we'll get into that. Yeah, it might spread a little bit, but uh, hey, who cares? And then I just think that they're really, <laughs> it just makes sense to me. Like if you, I mean, people will say, ah, well, it's not gonna work out because of central banks and everything else. They don't have a choice. It's here, like James says, the best answer is the genie's out of the bottle. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And lastly, I'll wrap up with this part right here, which is, uh, this is pretty funny. Uh, the same group, Sparkcase, makes sparks fly through its denial of Bitcoin transactions. <laughs> so I want you to keep in mind, this was seven years ago. German bank Sparkcase has made the decision to block all Bitcoin-related transfers. Brian Seelen, who works with the Anycoin Direct Coin Exchange in the Netherlands, has commented that the company is now unable to process any incoming or outgoing Bitcoin orders. He states we're running an honest company, but the bank just blocks transactions without contacting us, contacting us or the customer, very frustrating. This is exactly why we need Bitcoin. The bank abuses its power without any good reason or explanation. Well, now they've got a great reason because they're going to enable it because just like we talked about, there's money in those hills. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. That kind of leads me off into my next piece because people are like, well, you know, the banks, they're not going to do anything because we're going to get with these central bank digital currencies or digital coins. And uh, that's what the CBDs are going to be made. And then all the banks will just use that and, and transact. Not so fast. So with this one, I thought it was interesting that UK intelligence chief raises concerns about use of the digital renminbi that is from uh, or the digital yuan to control global transactions. So this is what's going on. This is what I think is going to happen and ripple through all the different governments. So the chief of the government communications HQ, one of the biggest intelligence agencies in the UK, has warned of possible negative effects on global transactions on the adoption of the digital renminbi. He states, I, if wrongly implemented, it gives a hostile state the ability to surveil transactions. It gives them, China, the ability to be able to exercise control over what is conducted on those digital currencies. So first of all, people in China are gonna, they're having a hard time convincing them to use the digital yuan, digital renminbi. They just are. And this is these reports that I see. I haven't been to China. This is what I hear. If you're from China, sound off in the comment section. These are just the things that I hear. So they're having problems there because they don't wanna be tracked. And of course they're in a communist country, but uh, you know, that's what they have 
going on over there. And then, of course, in other countries are like, we don't want to use this. Why would we want to use this? And then, of course, we have something like that. And then the next story and is simply put, Russia to allow foreign residents to own and use the digital ruble. The Central Bank of Russia intends to ensure that the digital ruble is convertible to foreign transactions or currencies and can be used by non-residents. First of all, who wants to use that? I can guarantee nobody in America is going to use the digital ruble, not withstanding any other parts of, uh, in the world. Maybe they will, which leads me to my last point. We're talking about how CBDCs are not going to make it. U.S. Senators asked Team USA to boycott China's digital yuan at the 2022 Olympics. That's the whole story. So look, it comes down to this. Uh, CBDCs, that's why decentralization is trustless because we don't need a middle person to create something to be able to use it uh, for a transaction. That's why Bitcoin and certain crypto digital assets are perfect. When we use CBDCs, I'm not gonna use, the, I'm not gonna use the digital ruble. I'm not definitely not gonna use a digital yuan, digital renminbi. I'm not gonna use any of them. And because we don't trust each other, the CBDCs, I think they're DOA. I just don't think it's gonna it's gonna happen. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section, but I think it'll be very limited to what is being used, maybe throughout the country, but as far as like international commerce and actually paying things, who wants their government spying on them? Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. That leads us to our next story, crypto regulations and where they're going and are they close? I don't think so. So th this was a story, uh, analyst expects US to embrace crypto with proper regulations in 2022 and see a refreshed Bitcoin bull market. Analyst Mike McGlone, this is interesting, with Bloomberg Intelligence has shared his outlook for the crypto going forward. He states, we expect the US to embrace crypto in 2022. This is from Bloomberg Intelligence. With proper regulation and related bullish price implications, Bitcoin appears to be on a trajectory for 100 grand. The analyst added that we are likely to see a paused yet corrected and refreshed bull market. I'm going to call bull on that one because, first of all, if you watch any of the videos from the, like last week, you had Brian Brooks from the OCC. He had given testimony uh, before a, uh, a Congress committee on finance, and they'd asked him point blank, "Are we behind the curve?" He's like, "Yeah." Well, why? Are we, why are we behind the curve? He's like, "I don't know," because when I was in the OCC, I gave people clear guidance. And the SEC doesn't do that. They just kind of just say, well, we'll see how it goes. And they start suing people. That's essentially what he said. So now, of course, there is the uh, uh, Ripple trial going on uh, against the S or SEC is suing Ripple. And this just broke. This is from Charles Gasparino from uh, Fox News, I believe. He states, uh, SEC is now arguing arguing it, it has not officially declared Bitcoin or ETH compliant cryptos. According to testimony in the SEC versus Ripple, that appears to be 180 from Bill Hinnemans, who's uh, the former chair, but the regulatory approach of former chair also, Jay Clayton. So they're in there saying, look, we haven't given any clarity to anything. And I know that we may have sounded like it because our past chairs did it, but that's not what we're saying. So if we think that clarity is close here in America, it's not. That's okay. Because like some people have pointed out, we don't need America to push this whole thing forward. Other countries are just fine and dandy. Canada, EU, Germany, just going forth, Australia, and saying, you know what? Here's the regulation. We want to be a part of this. Let's see how it all works out. That's fine. So America loses again. Anyhow, so that's it uh, for today. And then lastly, I will just say this. Uh, we did a, a follow-up or a deep dive on Dan Clips. Dan Clips is more of the advancements and deep dives into crypto and digital asset spaces. And this one is just for the news, but we talked about Avagashi. And it's I'm very bullish on these play to earn games, but this one's interesting because it's DeFi plus play to earn plus metaverse, and it rolls it all into one. So staking and, and getting yields and, and wrapping things, wrapping an ERC-20 into an ERC-721, an NFT into a token. It's very interesting. Full effect, I own the token. Like I like own everything. I'm very I'm very biased on these channels. I only talk about the things that I own. But hey, uh, I have skin in the game. So that's it for today. So look, if you enjoyed today's video, uh, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. So that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.